Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another vlog. Today's vlog's gonna be a bit like a week in the life type type vlog. Got a few things on this week. <laughs> I'm just getting little madam dressed for the day. We have just dropped the boys off at school. So today's actually the only day that I don't already have something I've got to do or an appointment in my diary. So I think what we're gonna do this morning is pop into town and exchange the kids money into dollars ready for our trip that way i can get it all put away and i know what they've got little madam seems a little bit peaky this morning a little bit grumpy her cheeks are quite hot so i think maybe she's teething i've given her some paracetamol um just to see if it helps at all so after the uh insurance palaver and thank you all so much on your feedback on that video um i felt like mm -hmm. i was just trying to get everything off my chest and you were all mm -hmm. so so supportive and so kind um but yeah after that palaver we thought we were all set to go um but then after speaking with airline special assistants trying to make sure everything is set up they have now decided that in light of recent events, Avery's recent hospital admission, they would like her doctor to complete a medif form, which is essentially like a fit to fly. Um, but what they really need to know is if um, her doctor thinks that Avery would require oxygen on board. Now we don't, oh it's okay. We don't keep oxygen at home, but it's more kind of in the case of an emergency where if Avery spiked a fever, had another seizure again, we had to administer a rescue med and then her oxygen jo dropped. Th that would all like be kind of worst case scenario. I think we would be incredibly unlucky if that did happen, but just in case it did, does the doctor think we would need oxygen on board you know what doctors are like when it comes to paperwork it takes ages so i'm really hoping that gets done it's supposed to get done today um josh is going to call and chase them up later if i don't get an email alongside that i am still waiting sorry about this terrible lighting by the way it's awful um, I'm still waiting for um, a medical letter for Avery's midazolam and her tablet form of levodopa because a lot of her letters say the liquid form. That was her nurse that was supposed to be sorting that but I've not heard from her in about a week which is a little bit frustrating. I have tried to chase her up so Josh again is going to try and call her again today for me as well. I'm terrible with phone calls, I'm terrible with confrontation and feeling as though I'm bothering people. Josh on the other hand he doesn't mind bothering people so he normally takes that job for me. Um, I mean don't get me wrong, I will nag and bother and bother until I'm blue in the face when it comes to Avery but um, it is nice to delegate the tasks that make me feel less comfortable so Josh is doing that for me today. Hopefully we will have a plan in place by the end of the day. Um, my dad did get his driving license, so I've now done the online check-in for our car hire and we have booked Avery's car seats in the US. It cost $82 with tax, um, which isn't terrible. And it is, uh, I think it's kind of similar to ours in the sense that um it can be rear or forward facing obviously we'll use it rear facing but it can also recline so that's familiar to us like we've got a car seat that does the same thing honestly i really think the only difference is the fact that um american car seats have an extra an extra clasp at the chest ours are only a five point harness they've only got the one clasp in the middle um other than that i really don't know what the differences are but that's another thing checked off the list which is nice I am just trying to do Madam's hair, but as she gets bigger, it's getting harder and harder to do. Let's give you glasses a clean pudding before we put them on, shall we? They're all mucky. Ready? There we go. Oh. Okay, all dressed and ready for the day. Shall we head into town? Hey? 
Should we head into town? So last night we actually also ended up having to make um, a bit of an emergency phone call to, well not emergency, that's dramatic, but a phone call to the um, hotline where our uh, feeding supplies come from because Avery's pump has been acting out and last night it just kept saying the feed was empty and the feed was not empty. We tried messing around with the dials, we tried kind of taking it off, putting it back on, we tried changing the tube nothing was working and any of you uk mums who have a tube fed child and you use a feeding pump you will know how the um switch from freesenius to abbott has been so frustrating the freesenius pump was brilliant i think it was called an amica pump never had any issues with that pump the Abbott pump, oh my goodness, it's constantly got occlusion messages. We can't get through a feed without an occlusion message and it basically just means there's a blockage in the tube somewhere. It's not the case. I know it's not the case because there is absolutely no way that's happening on every single feed. We always shake the bottle well. All you have to do is kind of take the cassette out and put it back in and, re and run it again and it's fine. But it's frustrating, especially if it's in the mobile backpack because then we have to take the whole thing out, put it all back in. I have absolutely no faith that the new pump will be different. I think it will still have occlusion messages, but hopefully it doesn't say the feed is empty when it's not. So there's the old pump. This is being collected on Tuesday. And then the new pump, um, it arrived at like midnight last night. Um, the one good thing about Abbott is if you need something and you need it fast, they will deliver it to you kind of within six hours which is really really good um but that's just charging up so um i've just got to fill out all the paperwork and return it just so that they know what pump is where yeah so that was a bit of an ordeal anyway let's uh head to town tummy time we've been back quite a while now to be honest we were only out of the house for half an hour which i'm glad of because avery had already gotten grumpy by the time we got to the post office so i did have to take her out of the push chair when we were in there um but all that sorted um so when i filmed my video talking Hi. about talking about ranting about inclusiveness I mentioned um, adaptive clothing and how we need more of it in kind of more affordable supermarkets, supermarket brands, I suppose. And um, a couple of you guys brought it to my attention that there are actually some UK supermarkets that stock adaptive clothing. So the first one was m and um, and I had a look and I was really impressed at... Um, how many kind of disabilities they cater to. I saw clothes that were suitable for children with hip dysplasia. I saw clothes for children with sensory processing disorder. So kind of like the seams and the labels were more hidden. I saw clothes for um, G-tube fed children. There was some like accessible clothes for tube feeding, um, preemie clothes. But again, I've seen those in quite a few places. You can get preemie clothes in quite a few places. Um, they had shoes for splints. Um, so I was really impressed at the range and the effort that M&S had put into it. However, a lot of it was out of stock. I've actually um, got an alert set up to notify me when a pair of shoes come back in stock. So that just goes to show that there is a need for it and clearly there should be more. And the prices, I'd say the prices were okay for M&S. M&S is obviously a little bit more expensive. Um, than other supermarkets however i paid 18 pound for three vests which i think is way too much money mu too much money for what is essentially an undergarment um so i did order a few vests on there i'm gonna see what the quality is like and what i think of them 
Um, so thank you to the person that brought that to my attention. Also, Georgia Asta stock some adaptable clothing or adaptive clothing, which I wasn't aware of. I was not as impressed with Asta's range. I am not gonna lie. Um, they didn't have as much. I didn't see any vests for tube fed children. Oh, that was another thing about M&S. They did like vests that, um, you know, do up at the crotch, like baby, baby style vests up to the age of 16, which I thought was really, really good as well. Um, but anyway, back to Asda. Um, so they cater to some disabilities, I did, did see that. <laughs> Their tube feeding range, now don't get me wrong, I'm really impressed that they had it in the first place. But what I would say, if anyone from Asda or George ever happens to stumble across this video, the um, tube feeding clothes, I think they would be good for a child or a person that was tube fed via a Freca peg. Um, so the kind of tube that is always a tube. However, for people that have a button and are always taking the extension on and off, that tiny little slit that is in the clothes, that's not big enough. Um, you kind of need some space to be able to get the tube get the extension set on and off you need space to turn it and the little slit they had in them clothes just wouldn't be suitable for that they didn't have any vests that kind of button at the crotch which to be honest is mostly what i look for in adaptive clothing just because normal clothes we kind of work around so trousers tops and stuff the tube kind of comes in between vests because they do close at the crotch, I like to be able to have access to the tube without having to undo Avery's vest. Also, I love to dress Avery in things like rompers. Uh, rompers for us, we don't tend to use as often. I love her in them, I love putting her in them, but on a day-to-day -day basis, we don't go for rompers again just because I would have to undo her at the crotch to be able to get to her tube. But all in all, I'm impressed that they even exist. I didn't know. That being said, I do think that their marketing could do with a little bit of work because it took me to have a rant about adaptive clothing on the internet to find out that these things even existed. So considering I have had conversations with many parents of true fed children, kind of in real life, not on the internet, and have not once heard anyone mention it i feel like it could be talked about more and it could be marketed a little bit better but again i am still really impressed i think m and i was most impressed with just because of the range of things they had um hopefully those shoes will come back in stock soon they had a few different colors and they were just like um, a standard high top shoe but they had zippers that went all the way down to like nearly the toe on each side so it would have been easier to get um Avery's foot in it if she had the splint on. Not only that, high tops are better for children that um, kind of have mobility issues, especially with their legs and feet, just because they kind of have a little bit more structure to them, I suppose. I'm glad I know about it now. I will keep checking back on M&S to see what comes back into stock because so much was out of stock. There was a lot of other bits that I like the look of, but they were just out of stock in Avery's size. But again, thank you to the people that brought that to my attention because I just didn't know. So this is actually the first time we've managed to do any kind of therapy not that Avery seems to be playing ball today um, because she's actually been really grumpy all morning and I know exactly what it was because there's always a switch in the day when Avery has a grumpy morning I mean she's grumpy now because she doesn't want to be on a tummy anymore um, there's always a switch in the day when Avery has a grumpy morning and that switch is always when she goes for a poo I know that she doesn't like feeling constipated um, to be honest laxatives are something we're not trying to implement just right now only because pudding you're being very stretchy and awkward baby girl um just because she's on the azithromycin and that usually does a pretty good job of keeping her regular um her poop is still quite runny so i don't think it's the fact that she's constipated as such Maybe she's just got a bit of a tummy ache until she goes for a poo. But honestly, the difference in the day is massive because she'll be really, really grumpy until the point where she poos. And I always know, I always know when she's done a poo without even being able to smell it because her mood will change instantly. Anyway, so 
I'm gonna try and make the most of while she isn't grumpy. I mean, I know she seems a bit grumpy at the moment, but that's just because I've turned CBBs down and she's not getting what she wants right now. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take advantage of this time, probably um, do a bit more work I put in. We've got some standing. We'll do some standing, yeah? Um, until the boys come home from school um but today i knew it was going to be a bit of a slow day to be honest the whole week is quite empty aside from a couple of appointments and later on this week i am baking my next cake um i will vlog that so you'll see that in this vlog but um in terms of appointments and whatnot it's quite a quiet week which is nice she has portage tomorrow and she has i say she has i have a phone call with um speech therapist on wednesday and i will tell you more about that a little bit later on in this vlog as well but for now i think we're just going to see what avery can tolerate morning guys it is wednesday um didn't vlog yesterday didn't really do much but avery did have a portage appointment we like portage avery seems to really enjoy the portage worker but i think it's because it's quite gentle it's all kind of play-based therapy and at the moment we're working on a couple of things one of them being um for avery to kind of show us or tell us when she wants more of something and then another is we want to try and develop kind of my turn your turn and um we're kind of doing that in stages so it's okay um the start of it is kind of like ready steady go so i thought i'd show you what we've been practicing this is actually like a car washing microfiber mitt and um for some reason avery responded really really well to it i don't know if it's the color we said it's because it's like zach's hair and she loves zach to bits and she just really likes it so all we were doing was kind of turning it from side to side rubbing her face she really enjoys it she turns towards it and then yeah stop do you want some more more do you want some more yeah yes yeah. so she's given me a little bit of a smile and she was staring at it for quite a while so i kind of took that as indication that she wants more so she gets some more and basically we just keep repeating this <laughs> another thing obviously the sign for more in makaton we do use that but then another thing that the portage worker has asked me to try and start doing is kind of tap her when i say more as well or again and it's just another way um for her to kind of learn what it means and it's called something i can't remember what it's called but basically it's so that she doesn't have to be looking to know what i'm saying to her um she can feel it as well and she said that when Avery starts a setting which isn't yet but when she starts a setting it's going to be good for them to have some kind of communication tools for avery right it birds and then the kind of your turn my turn uh, we've been doing with bells and like i said it kind of starts with ready steady go ready steady go avery do it avery do it there we go avery's got it avery's turn ready ready steady Good girl. <gasps> Mommy's turn. Ready, steady, go. So now she's not looking and I've asked if she wants more and a uh, portage worker says to give it a little bit of time, like 10 seconds for her to respond. Okay, so now she's looking. Do you want some more? Yes. Ready. Steady. 
So that is a really nice little activity that we can kind of work into Avery's daily therapies. It's nice and gentle. Avery doesn't have to move from her favorite spot to do it, <laughs> which I think she enjoys. And it's just helping to build her communication. So I did just get off the phone with speech and language. So Avery's finally been referred to speech and language in regards to her actual speech. She's always had a speech and language therapist for um, her kind of swallow and coordination. Um, but they don't make referrals for actual speech until two. I've, obviously Avery's just turned two. So the referral has been made. It still may take kind of three to six months for her to be allocated an actual speech therapist and for us to start working with her. But I think in terms of my goals, Avery's kind of speech and whatnot to start with is for Avery to be able to communicate basic needs. So at the moment she tells us when she's happy and excited and sad um, and we kind of guess on you know what could be wrong and it's a lot of trial and error what would be really nice if Avery could find a way to communicate her basic needs if she's in pain if she's hungry um if she wants more of something if she wants something to stop just really basic communication I think that's going to be kind of the starting point so I'm looking forward to see what kind of ideas they have and how we can move forward with it. But like I said, it might still take a little bit of time. So my M&S parcel came yesterday with Avery's vests that I ordered. So I thought I'd show them to you, uh, let you know what the quality is like. So these were six pounds each and considering most supermarkets you know clothes are made with machines they're usually made in bulk do i think that they were not made for anywhere near six pound each yes do i think they could have been sold much cheaper yes but all in all i'm actually really happy with the quality so i bought two different styles um this is the first style and I like it because the arms are free, which means it's going to fit her for a bit longer. I find with Avery, um, the ones with the kind of envelope style arm, this is the bit that starts to get tightest soonest because obviously it's kind of tugging on here and it's tugging on her at the crotch. I feel like these are going to fit a bit longer. And um, they've obviously got the button at the cross, the crotch, the same as um, normal baby vests, but they've also got the poppers down the front, which means we have nice, easy access to her G-tube. And I like that there's gonna be enough space here. We can undo as many buttons as we want. So if we're changing her um, tubey pad, if we are cleaning around the stoma site, or if we're putting the extension on and off, we've got enough space to do it in there. It's not just a tiny slit that you know the tube is meant to poke out of. So I bought that one in 12 to 18 months and then I also bought it in the next size up in 18 to 24 because even though this looks absolutely massive and it does, I mean this would probably fit one of the boys. Um, I find that once you've washed them and tumble dried them once they shrink quite a bit so I thought I'd get the next size up as well just so that we have something when she starts to grow out of the smaller ones. And then the second style I got, it's a little bit different and this one does have the envelope style arms um, but it doesn't have kind of a tight band on the arms. A lot of them have this kind of really thick tight kind of seam on the arms here and I feel like that gets quite annoying. It's not as stretchy, not as easy to get on. Um, but this one again, poppers at the crotch but this one has poppers here and what I like about this one is it's concealed so there are poppers there. Um, they're a bit stiff at the moment. I imagine they will loosen up with a little bit of use. Um, but yeah, I like that it is concealed. So if I put this on Avery, no one would know that it had extra buttons on it. It basically just looks like a little t-shirt and pants. So my thought for these at the moment, just because Avery's got her zipper um, vests, which she is very nearly growing out of, I thought I'd put these two aside for Orlando. Um, one for her to wear on the flight out and one for her to wear on the flight back um, because I imagine when we get back the zipper ones she's probably going to be growing out of them. I might take a crack at trying to make some myself as well for Avery because you can buy a pack of vests so cheap. I would never normally pay £18 for three vests. I would normally buy them in a pack of five and they're much cheaper than that and then all I need to buy really is a few zips and I could potentially just sew it in myself 
the kind of sewing work on the vest that she's got it doesn't look too complicated it looks like something i could easily do now once you've kind of factored in the cost of the vests and then the cost of the zips and then you know the cost of time i understand why a lot of small businesses and you know etsy shops sell them for the price that they do i do understand that I just think if a company could mass produce them the same way they mass produce an awful lot of baby clothes, they could be sold at a much cheaper price and I feel like that is just what I want to see more of. Like I said, I wasn't aware that Georgia Asda or m and did adaptive clothing and I am really, really impressed. I do still think they need a bit of work. I think they could do with not so much m and I think m and had a brilliant range. They just need obviously more of it because it was all out of stock. Asda, I think, could do with a bit of work. It makes me wonder like who, who they had on board in that team designing that range, who was on board that actually has experience with children with these disabilities i would like to think that they would have at least few people on that team that actually have the experience and have managed clothing for a g-tube fed child or a child with sensory processing disorders and actually know what works and what doesn't and what would be useful and what isn't useful and you know not just kind of doing kind of guesswork i think it would be a good idea to actually have someone on the team as opposed to doing kind of outside research because that way you've got someone that can always give their ideas um, and experience on what works better and what doesn't um so for example like i said i thought that the little slits that they have on the george g-tube clothing range um brilliant for a frecker peg uh, maybe not so good for um, a button with an extension set because that little slit just wouldn't be enough room to rotate the extension set or you know go in and be able to clean the stoma site but yeah so all in all I'm happy with these will I shop at m and again for adaptive clothing 100% especially if those shoes come back into stock um, because they look brilliant um, and those are the kind of shoes that I feel as though I would get Avery when she does start to walk because they've got nice structure. They don't look, um, you know, that sometimes um, anything, any kind of garment for additional needs, it can sometimes look a bit off, a bit out of place and a little bit, you know, not very nice. They look nice. They just look like a nice standard high top, almost like a Converse style high top shoe. Um, but they have the zips down the side so they're much easier to get on and off so 100% will shop at m and again what I would really love to see and I did mention this um, on Monday I would really love to see some really sweet dungarees and rompers the kind of clothes that you can't normally get around with a feeding tube I'd love to see those um, in an adaptive style because I, I love rompers and I just think they are so easy it's an outfit in one but we just we just don't use them as often as i would like to because then i've got to unpop her at the crotch every time i want to feed her which when you're out and about it's not ideal so yeah just thought i would show you those um like i said quality is really nice they all feel really really soft i've not washed them yet so i don't know what they wash like but in experience generally m and s um kind of clothes they tend to be a little bit better made than you know i guess kind of tu at sainsbury's and georgia asda they are a little bit at the higher price point um but i mean you guys know if you've watched my vlogs for a while we shop at m s for the boys school shoes i've had school shoes from georgia asda before and they don't last a term they get ripped to shreds but the m s ones hold up just as well as the clarks do so that is definitely a tip if you're a mum that goes to clarks every year to buy your child's school shoes m s the quality is pretty much just as good so i definitely suggest checking them out when you do your next school shop I am just doing a little bit of ironing quickly and um, the reason why I'm ironing because you guys know I do not iron on a uh, regular basis is because 
this saturday is my dad's 60th birthday celebration and he doesn't know anything about it so it's a surprise that my mom and i have been organizing um we are getting um all of the um family together as in all of the kids and the grandkids so all of my siblings and uh, we're taking him to his favorite Indian food restaurant. I love Indian food, oh my goodness. I'm so excited for it. And yeah, he knows nothing about it. We're all gonna kind of just be there when he turns up and surprise him. That is why I am making a cake this week. I'm making his cake. I'm gonna start that tomorrow actually. Morning guys, it is Thursday and it is time to make this cake. Cake. I'm on a bit of a go slow today. My body is just not moving as fast as I want it to, and that is because Avery was up at 4 a.m. So I was up at 4 a.m. I'm sorry about the lighting as well, by the way, guys. It's terrible, I know, and I really don't know how to fix it because I've got light in front of me and light behind me. Um, so yeah, I want to get this cake done and out of the way, and then I think I'm going to try and get Avery down for a nap and be honest i think when she goes to sleep i might try and have a bit of a sleep because i'm so so tired so i'm making a devil's food cake for my dad this cake is a little bit more work than a normal sponge cake but i tried out the recipe a few years ago and my dad tried it and ever since then it's been his favorite so that's what i'm making for him so i've done a little design on my digital notebook and written down the amount of ingredients, ingredients and whatnot that I need. So I'm gonna crack on. What I did remember to do this time was soften my butter in advance and also warm up the house a little bit. So I've got the heating on for a little bit and that is so that this cake actually mixes together properly because I don't want the same disaster that I had with Avery's cake. I do want to be mindful that this vlog is already over half an hour long, um, so I don't want to be yapping too much. I am just gonna crack on and get this cake baked because tomorrow I've got to frost it because I need it nice and cold for when I take it on Saturday it does have to travel in the car. morning guys um so as you would have seen i started to cut my cakes i make the frosting this morning and i cut the bigger one and it's undercooked so i've now had to put in a order on waitrose on delivery to get the ingredients here as soon as possible so i can remake those two layers i'm stressed my mum's gonna be here soon she would have bought the ingredients with her but i can get them quicker on waitrose so it's a lot of money but i I'm running out of time because I've already made the frosting and that's gonna kind of not be as good if I leave it for too long so 
a little bit stressed to say the least so I'm gonna get everything ready make sure I'm ready to make these cakes as soon as the ingredients get here and then I guess I will catch up with you once the cakes are made cake is done that was a lot of work and that was very very stressful it's done now i <laughs> this is why i don't bake professionally i think that is going to be the end of this vlog if you enjoyed it then please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to follow us along on our journey and i will see you guys in a few days with another video bye guys <laughs>